Today, we're gonna to talk about why tracking your income and expenses is so important, why it's so important to have a budget, whether for your business, side hustle, or for yourself personally, on your road to financial independence, what are the common mistakes, and how to do it right. My name is Alex. On this channel, we talk about finance, business, product management, everything in between. And today we're talking about tracking your income and expenses. Right off the bat, the first question is, why would we wanna track our income and expenses? It takes so much time, it's so difficult. Let's go over some reasons why it's important. The first obvious reason is that you, whether in business or for your own financial path, you obviously can't get to your destination if you don't know where you are. You also can't get to your destination if you don't know where your destination is, but that's a subject for another conversation. The first piece is understanding where you are right now. That's being honest and looking at exactly your state of expenses as they actually are, not how you'd like it to be. The second important point is that in every business and in every personal situation, there are ups and downs. And during the ups, sometimes it's important to make sure that we're saving for the downs. We're anticipating for those times that we're gonna need to use those extra resources. When you track your income and expenses, you can track the ever important concept of cash flow. You understand where you are in terms of how much assets and how much money you actually have on any given day, week, month, or year. Cash flow is important because if you ever dip below zero on cash flow, that means you've got to take out loans, you've got to take out debt in order to either pay your expenses in business, or again, if we're talking about yourself, be able to pay your personal bills in order to continue to provide for yourself or your family. But people actually hate to do this. A lot of people don't budget, a lot of people don't figure out their income and expenses and are living day to day. How much money is on their account at any given moment? That's what they make their decisions. But that is obviously an inappropriate way to live or run a business because you don't know that the $1,000 or the $5,000 that you have in your account right now is money that's already spoken for for any number of things and how much you're planning to get later. So you don't know the true state of affair. You only have the optics. And the optics is another reason why people actually don't like to do this because they think that they'll discover something about themselves that they don't like. They'll discover that they have too many expenses in a particular area or something in the business that they thought is profitable. Maybe the business is not as profitable or not profitable at all. And sometimes we prefer to turn a blind eye to it rather than facing up to the realities of what may be going on. A lot of this is on the subconscious level. You just don't want to do that. You don't want to clean out the garage because you're afraid of all the things that are going to be in there. You don't want to do this because you're afraid you're going to uncover something you don't want to know about yourself, such as that you spend thousands of dollars on coffee or you spend thousands of dollars on parking when you could have walked and all of these type of things. And that's a mental block. And the only way to get past that is just to realize that actually by doing this exercise, you're guaranteed to save yourself money, save your business money. And if this is for your own path to financial freedom, you might actually get there a lot faster than you thought you could. And actually it's probably impossible to get to any kind of financial freedom unless you track your income and expenses because you just simply won't know what's going on. So I think for a lot of people, it can be the first step. And that brings us to the how we're gonna do it. So there's a couple of important components. If we're talking about your own personal expenses, then really you need to keep in mind, most importantly is your main bank accounts. If you have any kind of retirement accounts, any kind of stock accounts, for the folks that are just starting out, it'll just mean tracking a couple of bank accounts and a couple of credit card accounts and maybe some student loans, some car loans, things like that. So to do that, you can actually use an app. You can use Truebill as an app that I like. You can link up your bank accounts, your credit card accounts. It's actually going to do a lot of the work for you. It's gonna tell you what payments are coming up, when, what you spend where. But I recommend the best thing to do is if you can just go to your Chrome browser, type in sheet.new and copy all of the transactions from your bank into this document and open up a new tab within that sheet and add your credit card accounts in there. All you need is the date, the amount, and what that item is. For starters, just type in what you know, fill in what you know. A lot of the stuff, unfortunately, you won't know if you don't hold the receipts. And if you go to a grocery store and you just spent $150 or you spent $300 at Costco, you don't know whether you bought yourself a new laptop or you got yourself a bunch of groceries. From here on in, try to save those receipts where you have a lot of expenses from different categories. Write down some short notes for yourself of what it was that you actually spent money on. The added benefit of all this is once you start tracking your expenses, you're going to think twice 
three times, four times before actually spending money on unnecessary expenses. And again, if you're on the path to financial freedom, then you understand how important it is to spend money or invest money meaningfully. The next concept is cash flow. We need to figure out where we are. So we figured out our expenses. We're tracking our expenses from the bank account and we're tracking our expenses from credit card accounts. We've got each month separated by how much was spent on what. And after you've written out what each item is, you can go and group certain items in categories. Use the categories that make sense to you. You should understand what something is, what an expense is, by just looking at what category it is. After you've done that for the expenses piece, do the same thing for your income. Once you've got your income identified, you can then put together a cash flow statement, which basically it takes the expenses, takes the income, and gives you an idea of where exactly you will be in terms of an actual cash flow in terms of your actual balance. So remember in the beginning, we said that a person that looks at their bank account sees $5,000 thinks that's how much they have will act differently from the person that has tracked their income and expenses sees $5,000 in their bank account. But in their cash flow document, they see that that 5,000 actually is more like 2000 because you've got payments coming up tomorrow, the day after that income coming in and the net cash flow position within the next few days might be 2000 instead of 5000. When you look at all all of these expenses. You can then go through your categories and track how much you spent per month, how much you spent per quarter, how much you spent per year on a given category. And then think back through the biggest categories and take a look and see were all those purchases necessary? Did they all add meaningful and lasting value? Can you change anything about those purchases? Can you not make those purchases? Can you make those purchases in a more economical way? For instance, you can use credit cards to process certain purchases, you'll get some cash back or you'll get some other rewards. Or there may be other situations where you're able to get discount effectively reduce the expense. Go through your expenses for the last year and see if you can reduce or remove as much expenses as possible. You don't have to do this all in one sitting, by the way. You can actually right now take five minutes to go to your bank account, your main bank account. Most of us have one bank account that we use for general transactions or go to your main credit card account, download the transaction history and process just the one month of it. And by process, I mean when you move it over to this new sheet that you've got, go through one month worth of transactions. That should take you no more than five minutes and write in the category or however much information you know about about each expense. It should take you five minutes. And if you do it at the conclusion of this video or even interrupt the video and do it right now, I think that's going to get you on the path to being interested in tracking your expenses. And once you do that, you're going to be able to quickly identify those areas that we talked about. What expenses can you reduce? What expenses can you remove? What expenses can you optimize? And once you do that, you're going to get an instant return on your time investment. So you spend five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour over the next few weeks tracking your expenses. And you might be able to identify 10, 50, 100, 500, 2000, 5000 dollars in expenses that you actually didn't need. And knowing that will allow you to make better decisions going forward. This is something you're going to have to maintain. I recommend doing this on a monthly basis if you'd like a quarterly basis. If you don't do it at least on a quarterly basis, then you are at risk of not understanding your true cash flow position at any given time and not understanding your true income and expenses, which means you you might not be able to make optimal decisions when it comes to going to financial independence or planning for your business operation. So I recommend doing this monthly plan out some time in your calendar, maybe on the third of each month to process the month before and track your results. See how you're doing in one month over the next. See where the improvements are coming in and you can actually identify these opportunities and you can actually see how much you've saved compared to last month, last quarter, last year. The other important thing is for folks that are used to making decisions about purchasing an investment based on how much money they have in their bank account at any given time, tracking your income and expenses will unlock the ability for you to actually have money left over for investment. And the the key thing there is to get that money out of sight as soon as possible. Because again, those of us that have not been tracking income and expense and are used to just acting on whatever amount we have in our bank account are used to actually spending and getting as close to zero as possible. If you have been operating under those assumptions, spend what you have be above zero. And that means you're okay. That means that once you start tracking your income and expenses, once you start optimizing your expenses, you're going to have some money left over every week, month, quarter, 
or year. And what I'd like you to do is move that money out of sight as soon as possible. The simplest thing to do is just sign up for an online checking account. I use Wealthfront, but you can use anything that you'd like and just have that money moved over as soon as you've identified that you've got potential investment that you can use. So if you see you have $500, on your account and you know your cash flow position allows you to take that $500 because you will not need it for the next week or month, then go ahead and take it, move it somewhere where you cannot see it every day until you figure out how to best put your capital to work and invest it. Those are conversations for another time. For now, it's important to change the way we approach spending by tracking our income and expenses, understanding how much we spend, which allows us to save or optimize our spending and eventually free up some cash for investment, which we move out of sight into another account entirely, which we don't see on a daily basis. We're going to talk more about where to put that capital after you saved it up. What are some easy first time investment opportunities in other videos? For now, if you like the video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.